So I have a question here uh, that I was doing with my learners uh, during the day and I just thought I should share it with you guys. So we have a sound source uh, that is moving in an easterly direction towards the stationary learner at 15 meters per second. Uh, the frequency observed by the learner is F1. So when this uh, sound source, right, uh, let me just uh, write that down. So we have sound source. Uh, when it's moving uh, towards the east, uh, it's moving with a velocity um, of 15 meters per second uh, towards uh, the learner, right, uh, the listener. And the frequency observed by the listener, it is said to be F1. And then it goes on to say, when the source is stationary and the learner moves in a westerly direction, so now we have a learner uh, moving uh, towards the west, um, and then the learner is moving towards the source at uh, 25 meters per second, right? So we have velocity of um, observer being 25 meters per second. Uh, the frequency observed by the learner is F2. So we have frequency. So we have frequency observed, uh, which is F2. It goes on to say that F2 is greater than F1 by 37 hertz, right? So we're going to get F2 equals to F1 plus 37 hertz. And then 6.1 says, write down the name of the phenomenon that the learner observes and state this phenomenon in words. So we know that the phenomenon is a uh, Doppler effect, right? Because uh, the observed frequency and the emitted frequency are different because of uh, the relative movement between the sound source, the listener, and uh, the speed of sound in air. And then 6.2 uh, 6 says, assuming that the speed of the sound in air is 340 uh, meters per second, calculate the frequency of the source. So let's start with our uh, scenario one, right? Uh, this is our scenario one where the sound source is moving towards the listener uh, with a velocity of 15 meters per second. So we know fully well that uh, frequency observed is equal to the frequency emitted uh, multiplied by V plus or minus the velocity of the listener divided by V plus or minus the velocity of the source, right? And then the frequency observed by the listener uh, when the sound source is moving towards the listener, we are told that is F1, right? So we're going to substitute F1. And then this is equals to Fs because uh, we don't know what the emitted frequency is, right? And then the speed of sound in air is 314. And then it is said that uh, the listener is stationary when the sound source is moving towards the listener, right? So we're going to have plus or minus zero here. And then divided by 340 uh, minus uh, Vs, which is 15, right? Because the sound source is moving towards the listener. This is going to give us F1 equals to Fs uh, multiplied by 340 divided by 325 right and then we can name this our equation one and then now let's come to our second scenario when the learner is moving towards the sound source right so again uh, we are going to have uh, fl equals to fs multiplied by v plus or minus uh, vl divided by V plus or minus Vs. And then what is FL? We are told that uh, when the learner is moving towards the sound source, FL equals to F2, right? And then F2 is F1 plus 37. So we're going to have F1 plus 37 equals to uh, Fs, which is unknown, right? And then we know fully well that our V is 340 plus or minus uh, the velocity of the listener. So what is the velocity of the listener? The velocity of the listener, it is said to be 25 uh, meters per second, right? So we're going to have plus 25 meters per second divided by 340 
minus or plus zero right because the sound source is now uh, stationary so this will be equals to f1 plus 37 equals to fs multiplied by 365 divided by 340 right uh, we can go ahead and make f1 the subject of the formula we're gonna get f1 is equals to fs multiplied by 365 divided by 340 minus 37 and then we can call this equation 2 so i want you to realize something if we say equation 2 equals to equation 1 then we can solve for fs right which is what we want and then equation 2 is equals to equation 1 because they are all um, giving us f1 right so equation 2 is fs uh, multiply by 365 this is 365 uh, divided by 340 minus 37 and it's supposed to be equals to equation 1 equation 1 which is fs um, multiply by 340 divided by 325 so what we are going to do we are going to make fs the subject of the formula right so we're gonna have uh, minus 37 equals to fs multiplied by 340 divided by 325 minus fs uh, multiplied by 365 divided by 340 so if we take fs as the common factor in the right hand side we're gonna get uh, minus 37 is equals to fs uh, multiplied by 340 divided by 325 minus 365 divided by 340 and then from here we can divide both sides by uh, this expression right and we get fs so we're gonna get fs is equals to minus 37 divided by uh, the expression which is 340 divided by 325 minus 365 divided by um, 340 and then if you put this in your calculator you are supposed to get the value of fs and when i punch that in my calculator i'm getting 1351.57 hertz so if you can look at this problem that we just did uh, the physics is really straightforward right uh, we have a scenario when uh, the sound source is the one moving and the scenario where the listener is now moving as soon as you set up your equations now you just left with with solving the math so let's do 6.3 6.3 says calculate the wavelength of the sound observed by the stationary liner right so we know that um, frequency equals to speed divided by wavelength if we make uh, the wavelength the subject of the formula because it's what we want right we're gonna get a uh, wavelength equals to the speed divided by the frequency and then what is the speed because we're talking about sound here in air right we are told that the speed is 340 and then what is the frequency the frequency is what uh, we just calculated right which is 1351.57 which is equals to 0 0.252 uh, two meters and then 6.4 and then 6.4 says write down one application of the phenomenon referred to in question 6.1 in the medical field so that's the doppler effect right and one of the applications is uh, ultrasound ultrasound and then um, another application is uh, measuring the heartbeat so you can write uh, measuring um, the heartbeat right uh, but this is the stuff you can just google and you find it and then 6.5 says uh, the spectral lines 
from a star are shifted towards the longer wavelength of the spectrum. Does this represent redshift or blue shift? So longer wavelength, uh, that is red shift. If it's shorter wavelength, then that's, that is blue shift.